forward. Rockcliffe, gee, that was strong by Rockcliffe. That is a terrific goal. Fantasia or Fantasia? Roaming Arasio. Arasio Fantasia! I wonder how far we've got to go back to see when time on was allowed for a pig on the ground. All right, welcome to week one. At the moment, it's called the Rock and Raz Show. We're here discussing all things Port Adelaide and a few things in between as well along the way. My name's Tom Rockliffe. I'm back at the football club. They've put in the SOS after week one. We've had six injuries. They need me back, but they've only called me back for a podcast not to play. I've got alongside me Orazio Fantasia. Welcome. How are you, Rock? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. Yourself? Good, mate. It's the good. burning question for everyone, how is that knee? Yeah, it's getting there. That's all I can say at the moment. I'm probably uh, a little bit off still. I think haven't really run properly looking back now and and speaking to uh, Viper actually this morning, our uh, head of high performance. Haven't run properly for a long time, probably close to six months. So, I mean, I, I'm a long way away in terms of just getting fit and getting back and, and getting that base uh, enough to be out there to play consistently. And that's what I want, I think. So we've got to build up our fitness. So Port Adelaide fans out there, probably the second half of the year is the earliest we're going to see Orazio. Hopefully we can get those fitness levels up to where they need to. We'll wait till the buy and we'll assess there. Is probably a fair assessment at yeah, the moment. Yeah, probably, yeah. And we have Daniel Norton who's off screen. He will be anchoring. You will hear his voice a little bit later on. He might want to say hello now, Daniel Norton. Hello, Rock and Raz. Welcome. And, uh, well, what a start. What a set. Uh, the guy's done a fantastic job here presenting you guys in some sort of light that looks uh, <laughs> moderately reasonable. So uh, good to have you back, Rock, in particular. It's great to be back. So we'll give a little rundown of, of what the show's about. We just really wanted to engage with the Port Adelaide faithful, give them an insight in, inside the football club, what happens in and around the place, maybe speak to some old legends of the club yeah. as well. A few special guests, definitely once a week at least or whenever we're getting them on and making sure this week, you know, we, we've got a, a big game against Hawthorne, so we might even talk to someone very special who's played a lot of footy. We'll see how we go. Looking forward to that chat a little bit later. This podcast has been in the works for a fair bit of time, Raz. You were, weren't here at the time, but me and Bobby Carlisle, Mentioned this to Daniel Norton probably three or four years ago, and it's taken that time. There's some been new appointments within the football uh, media department, AFL at Port, to get this over the line. Rome but wasn't built in a day, mate. It takes time to build these things. We have got there, and I mentioned off the top, we don't have a name, so we want the fans to get involved here. We want yes. them in the Twitter comment section of this podcast or the Facebook section just to send through what they think this should be called. Any ideas. Any ideas. There will be a prize for the, for the winner. And the eventual name of this podcast, I'm not sure. We might give them some Orazio boots. I don't know. They want some Tom Rockley stuff, I think. Some KFC, food passes, tickets, jumper. Could be anything. anything. We haven't decided on what the prize will look like at the moment, but there will definitely be a prize. Now, we have a, a little segment here coming up. We will have a, a review of round one against Brisbane. I want to get your thoughts on that. I want to... Yep. Go inside the review that would have taken place yesterday. Get some thoughts around that. I'm sure that all the fans will be interested in that. The middle section will be my rant. Mm -hmm. What's got under my Skin bonnet week. this week? <laughs> and what also caught your eye? So we've both got uh, what caught your eye this week. As you touched on, we'll speak to Sean Burgoyne, who played over 400 games of AFL football. Huge guest to have. And we'll also touch on, on the Russell Ebert tribute game yeah. this weekend special. at Adelaide Oval, 650 Port Adelaide take on Hawthorne. So that's going to be a really special night for the footy club. Yeah, it's going to be big. I think if we can pack it out and get as many people as we can there, it's going to be a pretty special night. Not only for the boys, the first home game for the year, but as you mentioned, that tribute is, is a legend of the club and I think he deserves it. Yeah, absolutely. Couldn't have said it better. We'll, we'll dive into a little footy bet, a Friday Ooh. night footy bet. Okay. It's brought to you by KFC. So that's something that I'm very thrilled about to have KFC on board for this segment because I tell you what, my waistline is continuing to grow. Is that your favourite food, KFC? Was that your oh, post-game treat? Post-game, mid-week, it's every <laughs> night at the moment when the missus is away. But uh, I'm really looking forward to this. So we'll get in the show and then we'll wrap it up at the end. So let's rip in. Beautiful. What do we got now, Nort? We've got a very, very special guest. A short break straight after the break. We will do our weekend review from round one and a son of a gun will be joining us. Debutante, the great Ooh. man, Jackson Mead. Jackson Mead. Looking Beautiful. forward to that. Can't wait. This place is different. It has a soul, a heartbeat. It gets into your senses. It 
it's more than football. It's belonging. Welcome back to the Rock and Raz Show, episode one. Yes, it is up and running. We're, look, we're, we're not feeling the name though, so we need a few tweaks. So if you've got any suggestions, comment section in Twitter and Facebook, please bring it our way. We'll find a prize. We're not sure what that prize will be, but Rock and Raz, not bad, but we think we can do a little bit better. Uh, big weekend of footy, gentlemen. Uh, disappointing, went down by 11 points up at the Gabba time for the footy review it certainly was we went up to the Gabba on a mission to win that game we went down by 11 points got out to a four goal lead during the third quarter thought we executed the game plan really well and that's the special thing about this new podcast is you're going to get direct access to what took place and then what took place in the review because Orazio sits in the review and he may be able to give us Port Adelaide fans now as I am a Port Adelaide fan an insight into what may have taken place up there. So a really good contest. As we know, we got banged up a little bit. What what yep. sort of came out of the review? Well, firstly, it was the Tom Rockcliffe Cup. Obviously. Yes, so clearly. clearly, We was. really wanted to win that one. But, <laughs> I mean, uh, the review was actually pretty positive. I know we obviously didn't get the result we wanted, but the way we played for three and a bit quarters was really the way we wanted the game to look. Um, you know, it's pretty wet and it can get a bit dewy up there. You've played a lot of footy yep. at the Gabba. So we wanted it a bit more in the contest and sort of just getting it a bit longer and then we can just surge the ball forward and, and keep it in our 50, which we did really well. And, and as you said, we got out to that lead. But I think the injuries just sort of took a toll on us towards the end and we sort of ran out of juice a bit at the end. Yeah, we certainly did. I think it wasn't our, our most crisp performance. As you said, there was a lot of contributors. We had a few players down, I reckon, as well that weren't at their absolute peak. And, and you'd expect that a little bit in round one, but I think there was a few flat performances and... There'll be a few boys wanting to, to put in better ones this weekend. What came out of the review of the forwards? Because yep. I feel like at times when in big games, when things don't quite go our way, we we break down in that front half of the ground, whether it be a system-wise or an execution-wise. So what did the forwards yeah. re review in that space? You've hit the nail on the head. I think we reviewed the forwards probably the most, and, and it was needed. We, we sort of lacked a little bit of connection. In terms of and connection, I mean, just playing together and when things got a bit tougher, we sort of went a bit insular. And you know what it's like, you can't do that when you're out in the field. You know, we need everyone, all 22 blokes out there or 18 out there, just on the same page and knowing what's going on. So uh, we reviewed that pretty heavily and just going back to some basics when it gets a bit tough, when the game's on the line, just competing and bringing the ball to ground. You don't need to mark everything and just being predictable, bring it to the front and get the smalls there. We've got really good smalls and that's that was probably the thing we wanted to focus on as well limit Harris Andrews you know he's a star yeah they've so, got a strong defense yeah really strong with with Adams as well so bring the ball to ground and and we felt like with Rosie with Gray with but we've got that sort of even our tools Finlayson, and Marshall and Georgiades they're not the biggest they're not like Charlie no we clearly missed Charlie on the weekend that long get out kick didn't Big we presence he's probably a week or two away he, he trained today i'm led to believe yeah he went for a run around today yeah i'm not sure exactly and i don't want to put the mickey on him and, yeah. and say he's back next week or whatever but hopefully he's back soon but he's the the one that we sort of lean on a bit but it, it's good opportunity for the other boys to to sort of step up and you know they need to fill the void while he's out not only are we missing charlie dixon we're also missing a or fantasia <laughs> down there that could have probably been a match winner Generally, when Port Adelaide break even in clearance, which they won by one, contested possession went down by one, mm. we normally win those games of footy. And unfortunately, as you said, I think the injury toll took a little bit uh, towards the back end of the game. Back end of the game, we know that Robbie was sore. We know that Rosie was sore. We know that Aaliyah was sore. We know Mackenzie went down. So there's so many out of that. I think we might may see a few debutants. The one really shining light out of the weekend, I think, was the Dan Houston move up to the wing. Mm. Wasn't he sensational we like that in the in the midfield and the yeah. wing? Uh, for everyone that doesn't know, he's probably one of the better kicks in the AFL, not just our team. I mean, you see he can bang it from 50 off a couple of steps and, and kick him sideways and he can do things that other people can't. So yeah, that was a bit of a focus as well, you know, just give, not look for him all the time, but, you know, get him involved in the play. He's a playmaker and we can get him back in that back half and sort of generate a bit, bit of ball movement for us. Get him the ball. He's in my <laughs> KFC super coach team. Make sure you get him the ball this week. Now, 
the, the sample boys, we know that we took four emergencies up there, so we took a yeah. group of 27. So they were probably undermanned a fair bit down mm. here. But that was a game of two halves. You were there. You've seen it live. We were up by 30, 40 points at half time, and then we actually went down in the game. But there's reasons for that as well. Yeah, of course. But I think that was a great effort. It was eight goals to two at half time. We played the way we wanted to. And I think Matty Loken, our, our coach, really at the start of the game, just sort of focused on let's bring the energy. Let's energise the ball. Let's move it quick. You know, we're a young, enthusiastic side. Let's let's play that way. And I think towards the end in the second half, we sort of just got overran in the clearances and, and stuff like that, which sort of let North get back in the game. But some real standouts, you know, Jake Pasini down back might be a, a chance and, and less Sammy Skinner. Debut's in front of him, but he was really, really good. And, and Trent Dumont uh, coming from North, Obviously, a vice captain over there. Previously, he's a star, but he he adds a lot in that midfield. And and even Jed McEntee's come a long way from playing Sturt League footy, and Abs- you know, a, a long way. A rapid rise. So, looking forward, we've got the Sean Burgoyne Cup this weekend <laughs> on Saturday night, seven ten Adelaide over. We take on Hawthorne. Really looking forward to this contest. It's a Russell Ebert tribute game for all the fans out there. So make sure you get along on Saturday night. We'd love to see forty to 50,000 there to, to pay respect to Russell Ebert, but also to watch Port Adelaide take on Hawthorne. Really looking forward to this contest. We touched about injuries just before. Mm. I expect Sam Skinner will play. I expect that Josh Sin will play. I don't think Dersma will get up. So I think there may be a couple of more debutants for the football club. We know that Hawthorne love to play this offensive brand mm. of football. They want to play on at all costs. They want to shift lanes. I've done a bit of scouting during the week. I've seen some training footage. They've actually got a runway on their training ground. They want to go down the corridor really? and face forward and get the footy moving. So how do we combat that first and foremost? And what are we going to do to make sure that we counter that and make yep. sure our forward half of the ground looks a lot better this yeah, week? That's pretty, pretty good from you. How would you jag that? You. Oh. I, I do my the, research. If yeah. you haven't seen that, you're sitting there with nothing. Norts right. is sitting over there with nothing. I've got notepads. Oh, I've got oh. my laptop down here, my phone. I do. I do a lot of work away <laughs> oh, from the uh, place. And that's and that's why you're the best in the business. Um, uh, we we did speak about that as well in the review, and, and we touched on uh, that uh, back half Hawthorne, as you said, like to energise and, and go through the corridor. So really important that our forwards we use the word sort of electric and 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 making sure we're on our toes and sort of really making sure that we can. Uh, lock that ball in our forward 50 and make them go wide and, and, and go around the boundary and not give them that corridor. Brilliant summary, gentlemen. Loved every minute of that. You've done a bit of research, a bit of home. We've actually done something. You know, if only you focused this much when you were playing, it would have been... Oh, uh, oh no, that's oh, harsh. I, 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 feel that like, I feel like I'm just entering the prime of my career. This is what I was born to do. It wasn't to play football, and we know how good I was at that, so imagine how good I'm going to be at this. Gifted, yes. Thank you. A little Love pat that. on the back. Uh, we've got plenty more to come as part of uh, Rock and Raz Episode 1. A bit of football royalty later on with Sean Burgoyne. Can't wait for that. But next... oh. Son of a gun. Jackson Mead. He'll be joining us next here on the Rock and Race Show. Welcome back. Segment three, would you believe, of Rock and Raz, episode one. I'm uh, stunned, actually, that we made it this far. Um, but we've uh, we've got here and a, a very, very special guest. We had the footy review a minute ago. Now you've got a son of a gun. Yes, we've just delved into what happened up there at the Gabba Land in round one. But we have a very special guest here. First game experience, Raz. I want to hear from Mad Dog Mead. <laughs> Don't you start that. <laughs> Mad Dog Mead. Where's the Mad Dog Mead came from? From this bloody bloke up here. <laughs> Sully, the Mad Dog himself. Oh. So how was your first game? Yeah, no, it was a good experience. Um, obviously not the result we wanted, but um, yeah, I think ultimately it was good to get up there and, you know, enjoy the experience of it all, so... Absolutely it was. Now, we always know that it's a special moment when you get your first jumper. There is no doubt about that in any shape or form whenever you play. Yours is extra special because I believe that your dad was the one that actually handed you the jumper. Can you talk us through where that took place, how that took place, and and what that moment meant to you and your family? Yeah, so dad, um, he brought up his first sample uh, Maggie's jumper, I believe, um, which was the old lace-up. I actually didn't even know that he was going to be presenting it, so... Um, he obviously brought that down on the plane and, um, yeah, he just spoke a bit about what it means to, you know, be presented your first jumper and a bit of the legacy and the tradition for my family but also the club. And, um, yeah, it was pretty special special for him to be able to deliver that to me and, um, yeah, it was just a good night overall. Yeah. What did you, uh, you think of it? Was it as fast as you thought it would be? Were the boys as – obviously, you're a big, you're a big axe yourself. You can handle it with the big boys. What, what did you think of it overall? Um 
I think I sort of knew what to expect. Obviously, Brisbane are a great side and um, had a bit of experience playing Adelaide in my second year for a half and then obviously Adelaide and um, Gold Coast in the trials this year. So um, I think I sort of knew what to expect. They were a big contest team and, um, yeah, I think I was pretty prepared for that and um, I think we did all the work throughout the week to, um, you know, expect what we were going to get and um, how we are going to counteract that as well. So, um, yeah, I think I fit in pretty well, so... We had, we've we spoken to Orazio just before about the game itself, but what was our, came out of the review from a mid, midfield point of view and also the team review, without giving everything away, what was the sort of general feedback around the game and, and why it was why you were able to get to a four-goal lead, which was really strong, but then what happened in that, that time to give up that a, a six-goal turnaround effectively? Yeah, I think um, ultimately, as we spoke about um, before, I think it was a big contest game and... Um, I think for the first half, we were pretty good in that. And then, obviously, when we got a few injuries, we were obviously down a rotation and, you know, boys have to stay on the ground for a bit longer. And, um, you know, it always does hurt. But um, I think Brisbane sort of just got a, a run on and a bit of momentum as well. Um, obviously, I said that the injuries impacted a bit, but, um, you know, that's how footy works as well. So can't really complain. Media, you played a bit more forward on the weekend. I know you probably play a bit more mid in the sample. Do you see yourself wanting to play more mid-time overall or, or what do you think, a bit of a balance? Or Yeah, I think certainly everyone's goal is to work into the midfield. Um, obviously, sample one probably going to be 90, 90% midfield time and then um, obviously in the AFL I'm more predominantly forward wing and then pinch in the middle when you know guys need a rest. But um, yeah, obviously when other guys are getting older and moving on, like Rose, Butsy, myself are going to probably get a bit more mid-time Durs, Miles. Yep. Um, I think we've got great balance of guys that can go through there. And um, certainly when guys need to rest forward more often, um, yeah, there's opportunities to get in there as well. Yeah, It's been a really good story, yours. You, you came in and in COVID interrupted, which is, I think, probably the hardest time to ever get introduced to a footy club. You trained in small groups. <laughs> we did everything separate. Came in, tried to play senior footy. We're, we're pretty close in your first season. Went away, had a big summer, come back, horrific injury that uh, potentially could have got a lot worse had um, you not been at home at the time. If you had been by yourself, who knows what might have happened. But talk us through your mindset in, in those periods. Did you think it was ever going to happen that you were going to get the opportunity to debut? Did you think, why am I doing this? Talk us through the rehab struggles there. Yeah, as you touched on for the first year that I came in, you know, it was obviously a COVID year and um, I think I started my pre-season pretty well um, and obviously... Came back post Christian, you know, struggled with a few hamstring um, injuries, and then, yeah, obviously COVID hit, and sort of found myself trying to play catch up. And I think everyone's obviously everyone's ideal scenario is they want to come in and play round one, but for me it was obviously a bit different. I had to take the hard roads there, and um, obviously go through some bad times to get there. But um, I think my mindset was always just wanting to get better, and I think I've been good. I've been good for it that I've gone through those bad times because it's obviously made me learn a lot and. Um, appreciate all the small things about footy as well like you know you're doing a little gym session when I was injured with my spleen I couldn't even do anything for six weeks as um, you both know but um, yeah it's kind of just made me appreciate the small things about footy people probably take that stuff for granted don't they you know just going out yeah, for a run what? and a kick every day you just oh, oh absolutely I haven't done one since I retired <laughs> <laughs> yep, um, Mehdi let's talk about your off-field stuff you know you've got a, a few hobbies Do you want to talk about your, your woodwork and, and things like that just get the the fans to know a little bit more about you Yep. Um, yeah, so throughout wood, uh, throughout school, sorry, <laughs> um, throughout high school, um, did a lot of woodwork at school. Um, so I reckon I did that year eight all the way through to year 12. We had a few um, hands-on things. We had plastics, uh, metalwork, woodwork, and jewellery, I reckon. Um, yeah, I sort of just gravitated towards woodwork and um, found a bit of a love for it and, um, you know, creating something at home or in the workshop and then, you know, you can be able to give that to someone else, sorry, and... You know, it just takes your mind off footy. I think everyone sort of needs that hobby and sort of that outlet away from footy as lots of guys play golf or whatever. Mine's obviously a bit different. Um, but yeah, I think I just found a real love for it and um, obviously it's a bit of hands-on and can hurt the back a little bit sometimes. <laughs> but um, no, nah, it's good fun and um, it's good life skills as well, like renovating homes or anything like that. Like I think I'm pretty into that as well. So yep. um, it's obviously, yeah, just good um, hands-on skills and yeah, a bit of life life work as well. We're all about self-promotion here and we know yeah, we've no, seen we your go. Instagram we account go. and we know that you're all about self-promotion as well. How do the fans follow you? What's your social media following like? We know that you love to post a shirt off picture. Where can the fans follow you? It's got the rig Please. for it. Instagram. Um, 
So my woodwork for Instagram is jme.woodwork. A um, bit more of a family page at the moment, but yeah, feel free to give me a little plug and hit me up. Yeah, man, I'm not talking about the woodwork. How do they follow you, your personal account? Oh, no. Come on, you've got to expand you... on this. You do? Yeah, we do. We want to delve into the Jackson Mead life. What do you mean? <laughs> you want me to pick this up now? Yeah, you can well, pick it up. A very, yeah. very efficient performance by the young man. I thought his debut on this program Super. was equivalent to uh, the performance of the game the other night. I'm of an older vintage, and you sound exactly like your dad. Do I? Oh, That's, mate, it's unbelievable. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Very good thing. Darren Mead, as you would know, Rocky and Raz, uh, the only player to play 100 SANFL games for Port Adelaide and 100 AFL games, uh, obviously, for Port Adelaide as well. So, a legend. Thanks for joining us, Meady, today. Hey, we're going to have a quick break because I'm looking forward to this. After the break, Rock's rant and what caught your eye this week. I mean, anything. Yep. And I mean anything could happen here. We could explode. <laughs> Welcome back. I hope you're enjoying the Rock and Raz episode one podcast. I'm unbelievable. I'm really enjoying just sitting here observing these two fine men in action. A little bit later on, a bet is on the line. We're not sure what that bet will be. That'll be part of Friday night footy forecast delivered by KFC. But right now, anything could anything could happen here. Rock's rant. What's going on, Rock? This could be an explosion. My rant, I'm going after the people that are riding Port Adelaide off after round one. They're saying that Port Adelaide are going to be the biggest sliders. Of the season, I just cannot have that. Yes, we lost, but please, come on. Yeah. We went up to Brisbane, who everyone thinks will actually win the competition this year. We took it up to them for three and a half quarters. Probably should have won that game. We've gone down by four goals. We've had six injuries. We've lost by two goals. We've matched them in contested footy. We've matched them in clearances. It's a long season. Port Adelaide still finish in the top four, and anyone that's riding you off, riding us off, or Port Adelaide off, I should say, I'm not part of it. I You're kidding yourself. Now I want to know what caught your eye this week, Orazio. It's off field, off and field. I don't know if you watch Married at First Sight. Do you watch a bit oh, of it? Or I, I do. It's on record. I'm not up to date. I have to. I won't go ruin back it for you. But Olivia, <laughs> I don't know how much you know of her, mate. This is almost a, a rant myself. She's carrying on like a pork chop. It's more a rant than what caught your eye. Oh, no, it, was, it caught my just how almost crazy she was. There was a story that she she was a bridesmaid and uh, didn't like the colour of the dress. And then the the bride said, "Oh, you're out of the wedding." Kicked her out. Oh no! And said, "I want the dress back." So she cut it up and sent it oh. back. Oh no! You can't be doing that. You can't be doing that. No, that's, um, <laughs> yeah, a few alarm bells would be ringing off. That's you married at first sight. Do you want to know what caught my eye? Yes, I do. I'll go Tell back me. to on field because that's where I like to keep <laughs> oh, it. I don't like safe. to, I don't like to yeah, play he's... the man as much as Orazio does. But what caught my eye was the debut games over the weekend. Yeah. And we know that Jackson Mead debuted for Port Adelaide and it was a really good debut. But I don't think you'll see a better weekend of debutantes than we've seen on the weekend. Mm. You go through the games. We got to Friday night. Dacos has absolutely starred for Collingwood, one of their better players. And then at the other end, you've got Jack Hayes. He's kicked three goals, yep. 10 marks, 18 disposals on debut, and you're like, how good's this? And then Your Martin, old mob? Yeah, he's kicked five and had 27. Does it pay the kid some respect? Is anyone going to go near him? 27 and five goals on debut. I know he's a little bit older. I know that he's 20 years old, but he's only 20 years old. And to be able to do that is just yep. phenomenal. <laughs> I'm just blown away. Yeah. Oh, the, uh, we, we don't want to talk about the Crows too much. Oh. Even Rochelle, he's kicked five, lots well, of goals. Well, then like. you get to Sunday afternoon. Yeah. And Fremantle are belting the mob down the road, down mm. at Westlake. So what we absolutely love seeing, they couldn't even kick it to a witch's hat um, <laughs> last week, the Crows. And then Rochelle turned that game on his head. He was mm. almost a match winner in the second half. He's kicked five goals on debut. Absolutely stunning from yeah, the boy right. from the Gold Enough Valley. Of that stuff. Oh, we're happy with Chapman's <laughs> spoil, though. Yeah, that was the best spoil we've ever seen. The debutants, stunning. Brilliant, brilliant summary. I like that. I like the rants, both of your rants, and I love what caught your eye as well. Hey, we've got a, a quick break, and then I'm looking forward to this. It's betting time. It's bet time. They've got to gamble responsibly. No, it's yeah. Sean Burgoyne coming up next. You've jumped the gun. I'm pre-forecasting oh. coming up soon, <laughs> coming up soon. But uh, a bit later on, Friday Night Football, uh, which is I'm looking forward to this as well. But uh, on the way very, very soon, Sean Burgoyne. Welcome back to Rock and Raz, episode one of this brand new podcast we've got uh, working here at the Port Adelaide Football Club. Remember, 
If you want us to come up with a brand new name, which we think we agree we do need a new name for this podcast, don't forget to leave your comments in the section on Twitter or Facebook. But uh, Rocky, a very, very special guest. A very special guest. We're always going to delve into a past player and see where they are now, what they're up to. And this man is Mr. Adelaide at the moment. Channel 7, Triple M, Port Adelaide. He's got his finger in more pies than anyone I know, Raz. Cabbage. Lots Money of everywhere. <laughs> That's what I'm Sean hearing. Sean Burgoyne. Thanks, guys. Well, I've got to feed my four kids. Four uh, kids. I'm but... not sure you need to work at every possible outlet in Adelaide. But it's very important to have you on this week because Port Adelaide take on Hawthorne. Saturday night at Adelaide Oval, we hope to pack out the stadium. Hopefully we can uh, pack that out on Saturday night. How does it feel to be back home, back at Port Adelaide? Yeah, it's good. You know, the Burgoyne Cup Saturday night, apparently. That's, Cup. What they, that's what they're saying around the traps, aren't they, Raz? Um, so I've first, thing he, first thing he said to me this morning. That's I, the first thing he said to I, me. So I've been here all day and not one person <laughs> said that. You've just come out with that. He's my, I've been running it He's hard. been running it. My, yeah. He's a little, in my ear, a little, you know, a little parrot all it, day. But that's no, good to be back. It is the Sean Burgoyne Cup, but it is also a special game for the Port Adelaide Football Club. It's a Russell Ebert tribute game. Yep. Can you give us an insight into Russell when you were around? We obviously got him at the back end. Um, I got him at the back end of my career, and he was just an outstanding clubman. He did everything for anyone. Give us an insight into some Russell stories. Yeah, I met Russell when I was a very young kid, to be honest. Um, I used to come over, and my brother played with Port, so I met him through through my brother and, and the Port Adelaide connection. And then through that state under-18s, he was my under-18s coach. And we uh, went up to, to Brisbane, and we played up there. So I got, got to be coached by him, which was... Um, you know, a big honour because I was a Magpies fan. Um, and then I got drafted to Port and he was uh, working the community youth program and he was a part-time development coach. So every Wednesday we'd come out for two hours of development and Russ would take us for kicking him and Jeff Morris, kicking, marking, whatever we needed to do. He had the socks up, the black boots on, um, you know, trademark Russell Ebert. And then we'd go into community youth and I'd jump in a car, drive anywhere, you know, within a two hour radius and spend time at a school and drive back with him and I'd hear all the stories about magpies and um, what he'd done over his career and who he played against, toughest opponents, all those stories. And even the, the, his favourite thing was bakeries, rating which bakery was, was better. So, um, yeah, I've, I've got some very special memories with Russell. Um, a great man and everything you hear about him is all true because, you know, he's an absolute legend. Yeah, you touched on it there, Shawnee, but I was just going to ask, what did he really mean to you? Like, obviously, you, you spent a lot of time with him, and then can you talk us, what was his favourite sort of bakery and pie? What did he What did he love the most? <laughs> no, he was, yeah, he was very special to me, and the, the other guys around as well who were coming through developing, you know, Dom and Kane and some of the other younger boys, um, he spent two hours every every Wednesday or morning off every week. doesn't matter if it was, you know, raining, he'd be out there, socks up. You know, taking us, teaching us how to kick, you know, how to read the flight of the ball, all the different things we wanted to. Because some of those fundamentals in footy don't change, you know. The other things do, but those things don't. And he was able to, to help you. Yeah, but then the one-on-one times where you can just chew the fat in cars and just hear the stories yeah. was unbelievable. And uh, I'm not too sure what his actually favourite um, pie was or sausage <laughs> roll, but he'd always have a nice coffee. Yeah. Always loved a nice coffee. What what amazed me the most when I got here and he went, we went on those road trips, didn't matter where we went, someone knew him. He yep. went to a service station and they'd, they'd bring up something and he would be so approachable and tell them, oh, yeah, I remember speaking to you here, there, everywhere. And it's just amazing that everyone still was felt like they were connected to they, him so strongly. They did. Wherever you went, it's amazing you say that because it, it doesn't matter where we went. They were like, oh, I used to come down and watch you play. I had the number seven on my back, my favourite player. Um, or my dad played against you or my uncle played against you. They always had a story. And no matter where you, you know what bakery went into, they knew him. Anyway, so it's <laughs> important that you get along and, and support Russell and, and send him off the right way. He was a, a great person for the Port Adelaide Football Club. We'll move on to Sean Burgoyne now. I did joke at the top of it. What, what are you involved in, just so you can <laughs> let the people at home know? We know that there's a fair bit if you just keep it to a couple of minutes. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm working obviously at Port, so I'm trying to um, help develop the boys with their skills. I'll get out there and help um, on the oval and then in and around the club. I'm, I'm upstairs working at the moment because we've got a kind of a COVID bubble set up where you, you can't go back from footy up into admin. So I should be in admin as well, um, helping and we're learning in the corporate and government relations and a bit of community stuff, but that's been on the back burner for the time being. Um, the other things, yeah, I've started working with Channel 7 and, and Triple M with, with yourself. Um, so you left that out of it, didn't you? You're on Triple M yourself. So we kept that quiet. We're kept kicking goals, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> so doing a little bit of that stuff on the weekends just to stay involved in the game and um, just to see how um, how that actually unfolds. So um, a little bit. I'm very busy at the moment and, yeah, 
Yeah. Did you did you think you'd get back into coaching? I mean, I'm grateful you did and the boys love having you, but was it always on the agenda? Or No, it wasn't, to be honest. I never thought I'd actually step... Once I retired, I was always never going back on the footy field again, yep. um, ever, to be honest. So, um, But yeah, things change. You, you, you know, you, you find out what you really enjoy. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm actually enjoying being out there. And the other thing about being out in the footy field, running around with the boys, is I don't have to join a gym. I'm getting my <laughs> exercise out. There's either join in and training or go to a gym. Well, oh, I, didn't, I didn't do yeah. weights for 13 years <laughs> in my career and still haven't, Shawnee. You've come from a successful environment at Hawthorne. You're back at Port Adelaide. What have you noticed about the football club being back inside the four walls is there do you feel like there's something special going on here at the moment what, what's your take on the footy club yeah it's um it's a um pretty positive environment to come into um everyone's got high expectations everyone's whether it's on the footy field or in admin you know like i spoke before i think club made a profit last year everyone's working together and working towards a common goal um so it's all building um the players you know once you get into the inner sanctum and you see how they work they all work pretty hard they all want to get better. They all want to leave the end of the day better than what they rocked up at the start of the day. So I've been pretty impressed by everyone, to be honest. And um, yeah, the round one's here. Didn't go off to the best start, but you can be really proud of the way the guys played. You know, they had a number of serious, in, in, serious injuries, guy playing, guys playing with injuries, um, and they just went down. And that was a tough trip to go beat Brisbane in Brisbane. I don't think they've lost many games in the last five or six years up there. So, yeah, it was a very proud effort, but unfortunately, they still got the loss. Yeah, it was a tough trip, wasn't it? Uh, who's impressed you the most? I know you probably can't pick a favourite in terms of player or on the track, but obviously not me. I'm never on the track. But who's <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever? But no. who's you know who's who's really you've gone and come here and gone? Well, wow, he's you know he's really. Uh, there, there's a couple boys. Um, well, generally when you meet guys, you see what they what they what they do and you um, see what their personality is like. Um, Lockie Jones has surprised me. He's a big guy, mm. um, and he's only what 19, so he's a man child. Yeah. Um, but if you look at him, you think, he, he, you know, what's he, what's he capable of? He's actually really fit. Mm. Um, he's got a really big tank and he's actually really fast. And I don't think that by looking at him, so he's, yeah. um, surprised me in that aspect, but everyone else is just training hard, um, and they do what they have to do. Um, and I'm learning what their capabilities are. So from a, from an outsider's point of view, then coming in, um, it's really exciting. We really appreciate you coming on episode one. Shawnee, 400 plus games, four flags, and you're still not the most famous footballer in your family. <laughs> now tell me, oh, is no. she coming home? Is she coming home next year? I don't know, to be honest. It does, doesn't get, get spoken about at all. I'm not, yeah, I'm not lying here. Um, but it doesn't get spoken at all. But yeah, she's a, she's a f- phenomenal athlete. Um, we'll see what happens, to be honest. And that's, that's, that's a yes. Uh, yeah. We can Whisper take a look. in her ear, maybe just try and, try and get her over. Yeah. We'll see how that plays out. I, I, <laughs> Easter, gen- I genuinely Easter don't lunch. know. Easter lunch, just drop that. Great to have you on, Sean. Magnificent football royalty. 407 games, like you said, Rocky. Unbelievable. Four premierships, of course, the famous 2004 Port Adelaide Premiership. You are a star. Thank you for uh, for joining us. A quick break. Now, after the break, am I looking forward to this, of course? It is our Friday night footy forecast delivered by KFC, whereby a bet is on the line around Friday night football, and that's Sydney Geelong this week. And Buddy Franklin, will he kick his 1,000th goal? So... We'll come back after the break and we will uh, reflect on that. It's the Rock and Raz show here at the Port Adelaide Football Club, episode one. Yes, we've got it up and going. I'll tell you what, I'm looking forward to this segment about to come up. Friday night footy forecast delivered by our very good friends at KFC. Gents, before we get into it, um, I'm curious. Either of you guys have specific phobias at all? Uh, Rock? Yeah, I certainly do. I am uh, absolutely petrified of a bacon and cheeseburger combo from KFC. Oh, come on. <laughs> you no, eat that weekly. I know where you're getting that, do you? <laughs> no, seriously. No, yeah, I, uh, I don't like snakes, and I don't want to tell you because I don't want anything to do with snakes on this show. Okay. If one pops out of here, mm-hmm. I, I won't be hanging around. Really? Snakes? I'm heights. Hate heights. Heights. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm thinking mm-hmm. if we're going to make this... Because this is a little segment where there's a little wager, a friendly wager Mm -hmm. um, on the line. I'm thinking not necessarily next week, but we might attach something. What's your phobia? Spiders. Okay. Spiders. That's good to know. Yeah, that is. We can. So, this segment, it's all about Friday Friday night football with Friday night footy forecast delivered by KFC. I want you two gentlemen closest to pin Sydney, Geelong, SCG. I want a margin Mm. and. As a little bit of a tiebreaker, just in case we need it, Mm -hmm. uh, how many will Lance Buddy Franklin kick on Friday night? Okay, me first. Challenges away, yeah. I think Swans, 
Not mm-hmm. by much. Maybe 14 points. And <laughs> what? I've got written down here, Swans by 17 points. <laughs> closest so, to pin. So closest to pin. If you're going the Swans by 14, 14. I'm going to go the Swans by 13. Okay. Oh, unders, okay. That's so if Geelong win, it goes... Oh, I'm the winner. No, no, you've got no. to get the tip team, right. You've got yeah. to get the team right. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll stay with 17 points. Okay, yeah, okay. And uh, how many will Buddy kick, gentlemen? You first, this time. I think you'll get it this weekend. Again? So I think you'll kick a minimum of four this week. And if you are at the SCG, please run onto that field. You have to run on. You have to. It's a yes for me this week. He kicks a thousand goals. I think he kicks three. Yep. 999. Nine. I reckon he gets the 999 nine nine and okay. next week's the big one. Three goals and you're saying four goals plus, Rocky? I'm just writing this yes, down. Yes, absolutely. Okay. KFC Friday night footy forecast. I will be... If I was there, I'd be straight out in the middle or straight trying to get to Buddy. I'd yeah. probably win that race too. You have to. I think even Gil, he said that... Yes, my turn of foot would get to Buddy before <laughs> anyone else. And just quickly, anyone likely to ever, you think, kick a 1,000 goals in the modern game? Never again. Never. I well. think you've seen when Favola was on 99 and Clarkson put 15 behind the ball so he couldn't do that. Coaches will not allow a player to get off the chain and kick big no. bags of goals. So you're going to have to play 400 games and kick two oh, and a half a game. It's it's amazing to do it in the era that he's done it with the zone defence and things like that. Like He's just incredible. Both tipping Sydney Swans. Raz by 14 points. Uh, Rock by 17 points. Rock thinks uh, Buddy Franklin will kick four goals plus and Raz thinks he'll be stuck on 999 and kick three goals. Uh, three goals. A break, and we'll come back to wrap it all up shortly. Time on period. We've nearly got there, gentlemen. Our first episode, which is remarkable in itself, Rock and Raz, episode one. Rocky, we're nearly at the finish line. We're, we're there. We're in the wrap-up segment of this fantastic podcast that we don't have a name for. We, we, we need one. We, we need... Ne- the, sorry, you we, go. No, we, we need a name. We need the fans to, to get in and, and sort of give us some, some help here, whether that's, what, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter... Wherever you can contact the football club about this segment, podcast, wherever you download it, make sure you download, have a listen, wherever you can get this podcast through the club's website, phone the club if you want. Ask for Daniel Norton. Tell him that you want to speak to him. You've got a name. Facsimile. Fax, anything. (laughs) Anything. I don't care. We need a name. You will win a prize if if we do decide to pick your name for the podcast. They may get a pair of Orazio boots, a a jumper. Who knows? KFC (laughs) bucket. Anything, anything. So wh- what is it that we don't like about Rock and Raz? It's just a bit dry. Yeah. And you guys are flamboyant, men. It's original. And we want to make sure that this podcast interacts with the fans. And this we- is why we've set it up. It's not about me and Raz. It's, it's the people's podcast. It's about the Port Adelaide people. So we want some input from you around a name. We want to also get some questions for a, a fan segment next week. Yeah. We want to run a fan segment on the podcast weekly. So... Same same channels to send through questions? Yep, same channels. And I think we might even, I don't know, Norts, maybe potentially get the guests out a bit ahead and they can mm. maybe get some questions for maybe, the special guests as well. Maybe if our media team can actually do some work, yeah. maybe on a Monday well, afternoon they can send out a tweet or a Facebook or whatever and say... Do something. You said it, not me. I bet I agree. We have... <laughs> Guest X coming up, but there's also a segment if you want to ask a question far away. Hopefully, we win the game on the weekend, so they're not too fired up, yeah. and we can get to those questions as best we can. But it's a that's a great thing. I see on the rundown for future segments, Raz's recipes. Oh. I like to cook, Rock. 
You like to cook? Yep. So you're Would a you chef that? in your house? Well, I mean, I'm still living with mum and dad at the moment, so <laughs> mum, mum's the chef. But she, you wouldn't be allowed <laughs> in the kitchen. No, I'm not. But uh, I do like to cook. Living away from home probably uh, helped that a lot. So we might have to get you over and cook you up some pasta or something. Oh, I cannot wait. I've only waited a couple of years for an invite to the <laughs> fair table. Oh. We may get there. And round two game coming up. We've spoken about it during the show, the Sean, Sean Burgoyne Cup, but it's also the Russell Ebert tribute game. Kicks off at Adelaide Oval Saturday night, 7, 10 p.m. I got that timing a little bit wrong before, but this is our trial run because Norts, unfortunately, he 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 just shut the trial run down two weeks ago, half an hour before it started. He said we yeah. couldn't do it. So, yes, I'm going to make mistakes along the way, and we're all going to make mistakes, but as long as we have a fun time about it. There's memberships, pump-up round oh, two, membership tickets. They're all for sale. We want to get 40,000, 50,000 there. Fill it up. There's those great ads, adverts on TV and, and on different social medias at the moment. It's a great ad, the Port Adelaide three-game membership. If you want to sign up, click go to the website, click the link, $100 three-game membership, I believe. We want to pack it out on, on Saturday night. Now, coin toss on uh, on Saturday night will be done by um, uh, Russ's wife, Di, and daughter, Tammy, which will be magnificent. His grandson, Albert's, who you might have heard, he kicked 100 goals or something uh, in uh, in junior football. He's 16 years of age. He's going to kick oh. the first goal, that, that first goal before the team runs out. We're going to have a huge number seven Goonsie down the northern end, which will be magnificent. Russell Ebert's old number, and I think we've got a Goonsie here with the uh, just in the background there, which the gentleman our players will be wearing, which the gentleman there, Raz, is pointing at the number seven, the famous white number panel with Russell Ebert's number. Uh, the players will be wearing that uh, to honour Russell Ebert on Saturday night. It is going to be very special. It's huge. We know what Russell did for the football club. Um, not only on the field, I, I would say he made huge contribu- contributions on the field. I would say he was bigger off the field for Port Adelaide, the community, and what he did for so many people at Port Adelaide. He was always there to help out. And the least we can do is send him off really well on Saturday night. We had a huge funeral out here for him, and it was mm. a really special moment. And to uh, remember him and celebrate that, it's a really, going to be a really important game for the footy club. Oh, 100%, mate. I mean, listening to Shawnee talk, what he meant to him and what he did for all those young players, the fundamentals and just learning and, and teaching. So it will be a special night. Got to the finish line, gentlemen. Beautifully done today, I thought. Eight and a half out of ten for you, Raz. Rock about six, but, you know, we can work on that, mate. We didn't do the trial, as you said, a couple of weeks ago, so that's fine. Consider this just a little warm-up. And uh, we're looking forward to hearing from everyone their suggestions around a new name for the uh, for the yeah. uh, podcast and also your fan questions for next week. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, gentlemen. Seriously, it's been uh, been wonderful to have you on board. And we'll do it all again next week. Beautiful. Thanks for having us.